Can I give you all a warm welcome to our prayer and Bible study tonight? And as we were saying there on Sunday, tonight's going to be more of a mission focus. So hopefully everyone has one of those little um, uh, Baptist news as well with you. Uh, or as I picked them up at the door. If anyone doesn't, um, just wave your hand now. Okay, but I think everyone has. Thanks, Henry, for sorting that out. Don't forget uh, this evening our Good Friday service is at 8 p.m. And then we'll be back next Sunday at 11 and 7 for our Easter service. And the other thing I should say as well is um, it was agreed at last year's AGM on Tuesday nights that there would be a collection for the missionaries. Now, don't worry, we're not going to start this tonight in case you're rapidly you know, looking around in your pocket. But at last year's AGM, we're going to collect for the missionaries and then at the end of the year, uh, the money, the donations uh, that would come in as a result of those Tuesday givings was going to go towards the missionaries at the end of the year. So for those who are using gift aid, I uh, could ask you if you could put your collection inside a little envelope and write your gift aid number uh, on that. So as I say, that's going to start next Tuesday, God willing, if you'd like to give towards the missionaries. Uh, I think that's all that needs to be said on that. I'm looking for an odd because I can't see if anyone's smiling or anything with your face masks on. But uh, the other thing is, just do bear in mind as well just the, the restrictions we have in place for your, your safety. Um, Please don't kind of congregate uh, in the aisles and the, uh, and the church, but as we're about to leave even tonight, later on, just wait in your seats until one of the office bearers comes down and tells you you can go and move towards the door, uh, just rather than, than congregating all here. And you can, if you want, have a chat, certainly outside as well too, uh, but just bear in mind the social distancing aspect of it, because it is important for our witness as well too as a church you know, that we are respecting these social distancing as well too. So just even bear that in mind if you're having a chat in the car park as well. Um, so tonight, we're going to, every quarter, we're going to remember the work of missions particularly. And that's not to say that we can't pray for uh, missionaries on other occasions. We might maybe draw your attention to something in the prayer line if there's something comes in from that. But tonight our plan is we're going to show you uh, a video just as we go to prayer a little bit later about the work in France. Uh, but just before that, we're going to have a shorter devotional message. Uh, so before we start all of that, we're going to begin with a hymn tonight. And this is, You're the Word of God, the Father. And it's, uh, the chorus goes, and it's our cry of love reaches out across the lands. So let's sing this together. Into heaven, leading captives in your way. 
Well, before we turn to God's Word, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we do want to give you thanks, Lord, that you are your Son, you sent him to be the, the Word, the very Word, to become flesh and dwell among us. And Father, even that through your Son, even the world was made. We want to give thanks, Lord, that he even upholds things, even by even your mighty power. And Father, we want to give thanks that you are the author of creation. You're the Lord of every man. And though, Lord, in our world not all acknowledge you as Lord, we know there will be a day when all will have to, to bow the knee and acknowledge Jesus as the Lord. They will have to confess him as that. And Father, just help us tonight as we pray for the work of missions. Help us as we pray for the, the spread of the gospel in our world today, not just in our own land, but also even in other countries as well. And help us, Lord, even as we turn to your word, may it seek to even just help prepare our hearts as we come to pray together. And Lord, we want to give thanks once again, even that we can meet here like this tonight in person. And Father, just help us even as we go to prayer later as well. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, as we draw closer to Easter, I want to read another passage from John's Gospel, uh, where Jesus taught his disciples about the purpose of his death, but it particularly concerns actually the work of missions as well too. John 10, John 10, verse 14 to 18. So it is a teaching particularly about Jesus' death, but also actually it's something to say about missions here too. So John 10, verses 14 to 18. And these are the words of Jesus. He said, I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep, and I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life that I may take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it up again. This charge I have received from my Father. Amen. You know, I think most of us are quite familiar with the, the setting of this passage because it comes from, it's from one of those famous I am uh, messages, the I am sayings of Jesus. And these sayings, of course, reveal something about his nature, even as Messiah. So shortly before this, he described himself as the door. But more famously in John 10, we read of Jesus described as the good shepherd. And the image of the shepherd and sheep was a, a very familiar image to Jewish people, not just because of where they lived and they were used to seeing shepherds, but it was an image that was actually used often in the Old Testament. And it was used there to speak of either kings or even the religious leaders of the people. And we see from prophets such as Jeremiah and Ezekiel, they also write of this image as shepherds. And they, says, they say that uh, the, the, the shepherds at the time, at the time of Jeremiah and Ezekiel, have scattered and destroyed the sheep. Yet God, through the prophets, told of a day when God would gather his flock in, and they would be fruitful, and they would multiply. He would do this from one from the line of David, as we saw on Sunday morning, the one who would be a just and righteous king. And so when they, in Jesus, these promises, we see them being fulfilled in John's gospel. And Jesus told these Pharisees that have been questioning him, he says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. So unlike the hard hands who don't own the sheep, when danger comes, the hard hands, they scatter simply and desert the sheep. But the Lord says, I'm not going to be like that as the good shepherd. You know, these are, these are his sheep and he's not going to let them go. He will not forsake them. He knows them and his sheep will know him too. And notice how Jesus talks of knowing them and them knowing him. And he's not talking there about some superficial knowledge here when he says these words in verse 15. When he talks of knowing them, he's, he's talking about a, a personal knowledge, an intimate knowledge, like that knowledge even that there is between God and the Father. It's a close knowledge. Jesus knows those sheep well, and they will know him too. 
But Jews knew that analogy well, that you know, when they thought of that, they saw themselves as a sheep. But then Jesus said something which maybe even shocked those people from a Jewish background as they heard this. Because he says, I have other sheep that are not of this fold. Other sheep that are not of this fold. You see, Jesus was teaching them here that the death of a good shepherd was going to have wide-reaching consequences. You know, the pandemic wasn't the only thing that was going to have global implications because the Messiah's death upon the cross was going to have wide-reaching consequences. We mentioned that was one of the great emphasis of John's gospel. We're talking about that on Sunday night. That Jesus came to be the saviour of the world. And John emphasizes that in various parts. He actually emphasizes certain teachings of Jesus to actually show that fact that Jesus came to be the saviour of the world. Not just to the Jewish people, but also even to Gentiles as well too. This is something John highlights. But it's good for us to remember that too, because as believers... It's good that we pray for the spread of the gospel in our own local setting in Cumber. But we mustn't lose sight of the global implications of the gospel as well. Because when Jesus gave the Great Commission, as he uh, had risen again and as he it was about to ascend to heaven, he gave that commission to the disciples. And did he tell them to go make disciples among the Jews? Is that what Jesus said? No, he didn't. He says, make disciples of all nations. That's why it's good for us to pray for the work of missions, to not just pray for our own area here, but also to pray for the global reach of the gospel as well too, to listen to the likes of missions reports. And you've got one in front of you there tonight, the Baptist Missions Prayer Line. That's something you can subscribe to as well. You can get that sent out to you even by email every Friday. That gets sent out every Friday afternoon. You know, it's good to hear of what God is doing in other places. It's good for us to pray for the global impact of the gospel. And there's something else I want you to notice about verse 16. Notice it says, I have other sheep that aren't out of this fold. I must bring them also. I have. Now, why have I emphasize that in verse 16? So Jesus in verse 16 is talking about people who were not yet his sheep. But he's talking about them as if they are already his. He says, I have. As I was studying for this this morning, I came across an amazing little verse in Acts 18, verse 10. And it's one really maybe I hadn't thought too deeply about before. And it demonstrated this same principle in Paul's life. In Acts 18, verse 10, Paul was in Corinth. But Paul had faced great opposition there. But one night, God spoke to Paul in a vision, and he says, Do not be afraid, but go on speaking, and do not be silent, for I am with you, and no one will attack you to harm you. And listen to what he says next. For I have many in this city who are my people. Now, when I had read that before, I was kind of interpreted that as being, maybe there's other believers there. You know, we have many people in this city. In other words, you've got many allies. But as I was looking at this, there's a number of commentators actually brought this thought out of it too. You know, maybe this is actually God is saying to him, you know, you need to stay exactly where you are because actually, Paul, there's many people here who are going to come to the Lord. These are going to be my people. They weren't yet. Whenever God spoke to him in Acts 18, verse 10, when he says, I have many in this city who are my people. And what happened was, as Paul and the others, you know, they hadn't shared the the gospel with some of those other people yet. They'd only been there a, a while and they were experiencing this difficulty. But yet what happened was Paul stayed after this encouragement for a year and six months teaching God's word among them. God gave them that encouragement to stay that extra time teaching among them. And more did come. And more did listen to even that voice, that the, the gospel, the gospel as it was proclaimed. More answered that call. I thought it was really interesting. You know, in this city, I have many who are my people. The Lord was going to call many out. Paul had a part to do. His part was to share the gospel. It was God was going to do the work of salvation within their hearts. So as Jesus says even here, Jesus says, I must bring them also and they will listen to my voice. In verse 16 here, when he says about 
that uh, that I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also. So there weren't of the fold yet. But in verse 16 of John 10, Jesus says, I have. In other words, they're mine. I am going to call them and and they're going to answer that call. So the people hadn't responded yet, but they were going to. And the disciples were going to have a part in to play in reaching them. And what a challenge for us to pray in missions, that God still has many people in the world who are his sheep, but as yet they haven't come into the fold. They haven't as yet come into that fold. So how do I know this? Because the church is still here. When I'm talking about the church, I'm not talking about just ourselves, but I'm talking about the church globally is still here. In other words, we haven't been called up to be with the Lord yet. And why is that? Because there's still more work for us to do here on this earth. There's still more souls to be added to that kingdom. See, the cross and the preaching of it was going to have a global impact. But lastly, Christ's death was going to transform lives. Because Christ's death was not only going to reconcile people to God, it was going to reconcile people to others as well. See, Jesus tells them here, there will be one flock and one shepherd. Christ didn't just come to die for the Jews. He came to die so that all who believe would come to God, both Jew and Gentile. And this is something echoed back in Ezekiel, which who also talks about this image of Israel being like the sheep and talking about those shepherds who were over them before. God had said in Ezekiel 34, 23, I will set over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them and be their shepherd. In other words, whenever these people were going to come to Christ, whenever they would respond to the message of the gospel, there weren't just going to simply be a Jewish church and then a Gentile church. There were going to be one flock, one shepherd. And when you think of this, this was amazing even revolutionary actually to someone from a jewish background because you see normally jew and gentile if i say they didn't get on to be honest that's an understatement the jews actually regarded the gentiles as being unclean like dogs that's actually how they regarded them because they saw them as people who don't possess the law people who don't even follow those ceremonial laws of cleansing that they had so they very simply saw these gentiles as just like unclean street dogs effectively that's how they viewed gentiles yet jesus says he had come even for those who are outside of uh, those outside of the fold that they're going to be brought in they're going to be one flock and they're going to have one shepherd and you know this was something the early church faced the jew and gentile christians were going to come together and be one church paul didn't he write about that as well paul writes about that actually very often because that was an issue in the early church. You think about it, two people who were polar opposites, these groups who were polar opposites, how are they going to all get on together? In Galatians 3, 28, Paul says, there's neither Jew nor Greek, nor slave nor free, nor male and female, you're all one in Christ. In other words, first and foremost, now you're in Christ, you've got a new identity. You're Christian. First and foremost, you're a Christian. Before you're a Jew, before you're a Gentile, you're a Christian, if you've trusted in Christ. And this was something that Paul particularly addressed in Ephesians. He reminded in Ephesians 2, and also in Ephesians 4, of the Jewish and Gentile Christians of this fact. To the Gentiles, he says, you know, you who were once afar off have been brought near, by what? By the blood of Christ. Jesus is our peace. He made us both one. He reconciled us both to God in one body through the cross. And so he says, now you're no longer strangers and aliens. You're fellow citizens with saints and and members of the household of God, with Christ being your cornerstone. You're now being joined together, growing up into a holy temple, into a dwelling place for God's spirit. So as a believer, you're part of a big family. You are. That's a wonderful thing. You know, my parents, they just had me because, you know, after me, they thought, no, I couldn't have another one of those. But no, I, I don't know. But no, my mum came from a big family, though. So what I don't have in brothers and sisters, I have in cousins. I've maybe told you this before. So my mum came from a family of 13. So if you're talking about counting the cousins, 
And then the second cousins, I think it actually goes into the 50s, actually, believe it or not, 40s or 50s. So some of them, many of them are actually here, not here, literally, not in the church tonight for anyone who's watching online. But no, many of them are actually still here in Northern Ireland, but others have actually gone further afield. Some are even in other countries as well, too. And it's a lovely thing to have that family. You know, even when I see the cousins that I haven't seen in a while, we still banter one another about exactly the same things as if, you know, we just seen one another yesterday. It's a precious thing. I can count myself to being part of that family. But, you know, we have a great privilege of being part of a bigger church family. That was vividly illustrated one, one Easter some years ago. I used to help out with an Easter outreach run by Young Life in Dublin. And a Grace Baptist Church, it's a real multinational church. And one Sunday, the pastor asked them, one Easter Sunday, just the real mixture of all these different you know, uh, people. And he says, why don't you say Christ has risen in your own language? And I think that Sunday, that 14 different languages, people saying Christ has risen, it was powerful. And I thought it gave me a real you know, insight into, imagine what it's going to be like in heaven. People from different tongue, tribe, and nation all gathered together singing God's praises. You know, as believers, you're part of a wider family. And you know there's parts of the family you haven't met yet. But one day you will in glory. But here and today, they need your prayers. Because we have one Lord, one faith, one hope, one spirit living within us. So let's keep praying for that family. We're going to go to prayer very shortly. We're going to show a video just very shortly. But as we draw near to Easter, let us remember the global impact of Christ's death. He didn't come just for one group of people or one particular nation. He came for those in the world. But also to remember the transforming power of the gospel and changing lives and even reconciling not only people to God, but even Christians to one another as well too. We're going to do that tonight. Let's, let's pray before we show this video. Heavenly Father, we do want to give you thanks for the great power of the gospel, for even of what was accomplished through the cross, that through that many people even could come to you from different tribes, tongues, and nations. And so, Father, even as we think of the work of missions tonight, as we pray for that, just help us to even remember our brothers and sisters in Christ. Father, just help us even as we pray together. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, we're going to show you a little video now that Baptist Missions have sent us. So before we go to prayer, we're going to watch this. This is about seven minutes long. And then after that, um, I will get up just very briefly and just mention a few uh, prayer points. But this is from France. It's from a, a young guy who's just starting off in the work in France, Andrew Livingstone. Hey, everyone. It's so good to see you all. Uh, thank you for the opportunity just to share a little bit uh, about what the Lord is doing here in central France. Um, for anyone who doesn't know me already, my name is Andrew Livingstone. Uh, I'm a member at Nakani Baptist Church, and I have just entered my second month of a 12-month placement with the Irish Baptist Mission. Joining me today is Sephora Knickerbocker, uh, my best friend and future wife. Um, we met during my uh, first visit here to France in August. Um, we quickly became friends, obviously, <laughs> and uh, near the end of the month, we began to pray and really seek the Lord um, as to whether he would be bringing us together um, to serve him as a couple. Uh, with a great sense of joy, um, with much peace and confirmation from the Lord, uh, we decided that it would be right to uh, begin a relationship um, towards marriage. We are so delighted to let you all know that we have decided to get engaged at Christmas. and We have already set a date for our wedding in early May of 2021. Um, so with all of that, uh, with, uh, just ask you to pray for us and that the Lord would bless us, that the Lord would help us uh, in this season. Uh, today we would love to tell you a little bit about the various ministries which we have the privilege of being involved in. Um, so Sephora, you want to go first? Sure. Yeah, I'd love to share a little bit about myself and about the camp ministry here in La Hod. Uh, I was born uh, in France and grew up in a missionary family. And I um, accepted the Lord Jesus Christ when I was five years old and he's changed my life for the much better. Um, but yeah, I grew up in a, in a camp and after um, finishing my schooling, I went to the States and studied youth ministries there. 
um, got to serve in different camps uh, while I was there. And after a few years, the Lord really um, convinced me that I needed to come back to France. And uh, I didn't know yet why, but after a while it became clear that He um, wanted me to take over this camp ministry, the management of it, as my parents are going into retirement. We run a youth and family camps here in the summer. Uh, we've added choir camps, ski camps, pastor and church retreats these past um, few months, actually. So it's been really nice to add new activities. Um, we've had the privilege of seeing five young people get saved this summer mm. and witness six of them get baptized. So that was wonderful. Um, obviously, with a building as big as this, there's many, many maintenance needs and uh, lots of different projects. And it's been a huge blessing to have Andrew here mm. that's been helping so much with these projects and overseeing different things. Um, a big project that's coming up, though, is the switching out of our windows. Um, we've got a single glazed windows right now, and we'd like to um, switch them to uh, the double glazing. Um, so just pray with us that um, the Lord would provide to these needs in the months to come. Yeah, um, it's been a huge privilege to work alongside uh, Sephora, uh, Tim and Elizabeth here at the camp. Um, my involvement, as she said, is mainly in the maintenance. And uh, so please do pray for this ministry. Um, if you feel like you would like to give towards the Windows Project, as Sephora has said, please do get in touch with us. Um, we would love to hear from you. Here in my first year of France, a lot of my time has been spent in language learning and evangelism. Uh, although I have a good base knowledge in the language already, uh, I continue to meet with Sephora's mom, Elizabeth, uh, to practice reading, uh, grammar, uh, dictation, and various other aspects of the language which are important to learn. Uh, as well as this, I have been the, the, the privilege of being involved in the proclamation of the gospel in a town called Mondor, um, where we set up literature tables uh, on a Friday um, to share Christian literature, um, to give out Bibles and calendars um, to those people who pass by. Um, as my language skill increases uh, and progresses, uh, I also have the opportunity to be involved in preaching at various churches in our area. Um, one of these that I would love to mention is uh, that of a town called Aubusson. Um, here there's a group of around about 18 to 20 believers who meet in a restaurant each month um, for Bible teaching, for prayer uh, and for fellowship. Uh, they're currently looking for a, a permanent building to, to meet in uh, and with the view to increasing their services to every other week. Um, so please pray for this group. Please pray that they will continue to grow and that they will continue to seek the Lord's guidance um, for the future. Um, here in France, I uh, attend at the church uh, of a town called Ussel, um, where I also will have the opportunity of being involved in various ministries over the coming year. Um, this church of Ussel has around about 40 to, to, to 50 believers. Um, and there are various ministries of evangelism, of uh, theological training, uh, youth ministries, and so on. Uh, and so please pray that the Lord will bless us as we continue to serve him here uh, and as a church, as we continue to reach out into our local community mm -hmm. uh, to share Christ and make him known. Um, as we wrap up this video, uh, I would just love to read to you some verses from scripture uh, that really capture the Lord's work uh, in this area, uh, that capture what the Lord has done for Sephora and I in bringing us together. Uh, and which capture the ongoing work of evangelism uh, in, in, in this area. So let me read to you from Psalm, uh, Psalm 126, and I'm going to read verses 3, um, verses 5, and verses 6. So Psalm 126, verses 3, 5, and 6. The Lord has done great things for us, mm -hmm. uh, and we are glad. Um, those who go out sowing with tears will reap with songs of joy. Um, those who go out weeping Carrying seed to sow uh, will doubtless return with songs of joy, carrying their sheaves with them. Uh, please pray for us as we continue to sow, um, as we continue to, to, to go out um, serving the Lord, that he would bless us, that he would increase the work of his hand for his glory, um, and that he would be um, at the centre of it all. So thank you so much for your prayers. Uh, goodbye for now. Bye. Bye-bye.
Heavenly Father, we do want to thank you, Lord, even for the global reach of your gospel. We give thanks that hearts and lives are being changed in all different places, Lord. Father, even how the, this period of lockdown has not stopped the spread of the gospel, but actually has even maybe spread it even further than it has gone even before. We're mindful of even of others in other countries even watching different services as well too, even here. Father, we do pray for those uh, in the, the south and even the challenges that they've faced. And we pray for the government down there as well, even as they do consider even easing restrictions a little bit. But Father, we do pray that churches would be able to, to go back. And we do pray for Shane and Luana there. We do pray, Lord, that you'll help them as they, even as they look at the, the work of even trying to form a church from the believers there. Father, even how that's complicated just by the current situation. And Father, we do pray for Lourdes Brew. We want to give thanks, Lord, that uh, her stay in the UK has been extended until the 30th of April. But Father, we do pray about the future, even regarding her, uh, either that Peru would reopen her borders or the people coming in from the UK, or else that Lourdes would get that extension to stay on. And Father, we do pray for those countries that are experiencing this third wave at the moment. Father, just if these are challenging days, days even where we have to respond so quickly, where often services have to be taken online just with even 24 hours notice as well. Father, just help all the, the pastors and missionaries as they do, do to seem to cope with these ever-changing circumstances. But Father, we know in the midst of all these things, that we have an unchanging God. And Father, you are able, you are sufficient. And Father, how you can use this and use even meetings such as even Zoom meetings as well, that even others are doing Zoom Bible studies. And Father, just may they be the means of building others up in their faith and even reaching others for Christ. And so Father, even as we'll meet here, God willing on the, the weekend to remember Christ's death and resurrection, Father, help us as we gather. We do pray for the rest of the members of the church and we long that we would see more even returning as well. And Father, but for those who are unable to, some of the names have been mentioned tonight, Lord. Father, just speak to them even through the online services or even through your word as well. May they know that they are being prayed for here and that they are missed. And so, Father, help us and be with us even as we leave here tonight. Give us a safe journey even home in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm -hmm.